Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very exciting chess game. In this chess game, uh, first of all, did you ever heard the name Henry Ernst Atkins? Well, he was a very special chess player and in this chess video, I'm going to show you one of his chess games and if possible, in the upcoming days, I also want to show some other chess games by Henry Ernst Atkins. So his opponent Gunston was the British Correspondence Chess Champion, a pretty decent chess player when we look at his career. But you also need to know uh, Henry Ernst Atkins had a very colorful chess career. Even though he didn't, uh, he didn't play chess seriously. So let me uh, give you some short informations about Henry Ernst Atkins. Now, I always knew Henry Atkins. Uh, actually, uh, maybe for about 10 years ago or maybe more than that, uh, I remember that I analyzed and I saw one of his chess games uh, and I was like, whoa, holy cow, holy moly. That was my reaction. <laughs> I'm not joking. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. One of the most beautiful chess games that I have ever seen in my life. Now, this is not that chess game, but maybe in the future I'm going to... Uh, I'm planning to show that chess game as well, that holy cow chess game. Uh, but today I'm going to show a simple chess game and I want to give some short informations about Henry Ernst Atkins. Now, he is from England. Uh, he was born in 1872 and he passed away in 1955. Uh, he was a teacher. Uh, he was a math teacher. That was his profession. And he treated chess as a hobby. He devoted a very little time uh, for uh, practice, you know, for becoming a better chess player. So he made, he didn't train that much and he only played in, uh, he only played in some handful of international chess tournaments. But according to chess experts, he was an extremely gifted chess player despite uh, devoting relatively little time for practicing. Uh, so according to experts, he would probably become one of the world's leading players had he took the game seriously, but uh, he didn't do that. So he also gave some very, very long breaks. Uh, so, and according to chess experts, again, uh, they rank him as, uh, as the number sixth in the world from November 1902 until February 1903. So he also started playing chess at a relatively old age. He was 17 years old. And listen, despite uh, taking, I mean, despite treating chess as a hobby, he, he became the British chess champion. Uh, he became, he won the British chess championship and he won that a record nine times. So his record in the British Championship is unparalleled. He played in 11 times and winning nine of those in 1905, 1906, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then he took a long break and after he came back, he won the British Chess Championship once again in 1924 and also in 1925. So his record is unparalleled. He won the British Chess Championship nine times. Unbelievable. So according to chess experts, he was the most talented British chess player ever. So we can say that he was like uh, the Paul Morphy or Harry Nelson Pillsbury of England. And later uh, he decided to make a return at an old age. So his last appearance in the British Chess Championship was in 1937 and he, he became third 
he finished the tournament at the third place at the age of 65 years old. An incredible chess player, an amazing chess player. Uh, also, Wilhelm Steinitz was his favorite chess player, so he studied Wilhelm Steinitz. And in 1950, FIDE, the Chess Federation, awarded Atkins the international master title in recognition of his achievements. He died in Leicester in 1955 at the age of 82. Okay, so these are some of the informations uh, about Henry Ernst Atkins. And uh, there are some other informations uh, about this amazing chess player. But let's check out one of his chess games. So let's see what happened in this chess game. Atkins had the white pieces and he starts the game with e4. We have e5, knight to f3, knight to f6, knight to c3, knight to c6, and we have four knights game. Bishop to b5, and this is the Spanish variation of the four knights game. So bishop to b4, d3, d6, castle link by both sides, and then eliminating the knight, and knight goes back, and kicking the bishop back, and knight to g3, d5, and Atkins played queen to a4. It looks like he's attacking the c pawn. So black welcomes his opponent, and Atkins didn't capture the pawn. Of course, he was not a chess. Uh, he was not a chess petser. He was a very talented chess player. Only a fool would capture that pawn. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Uh, but we have bishop to g5 by Atkins. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, okay. You don't have to be a fool. You know, you can play bad moves. If you are a bad chess player like me, you could captured the pawn, queen takes on c6, but then uh, you would run into some trouble, bishop to d7, and after queen to b7, rook over, and where is the queen going? Queen to a6, after d takes, if capturing back, it is black to move, what would you do in this position if you had the black pieces? So consider this as a small, very small uh, chess problem. Then bishop to b5, did you see this move, forking queen and the rook? And if capturing the bishop, then bishop takes on f2 and winning the queen. So, okay, bishop to g5, bishop to b7, and Atkins played knight to h5, and you can see that this doesn't look very good. The knight is pinned, so king over, and then e takes on d5, and this opens the queen. So c takes on d5, and then queen to h4 by Henry Atkins, and he's attacking the knight for three times, and black is only defending for two times, and if capturing the knight, uh, that is just game over, I mean knight takes knight is winning, even bishop takes knight is winning, so probably knight takes knight is the correct move, so we have rook to e6, defending for three times, but it is white to move. Now, what would you do in this position if you had the white pieces? This is very important. Okay, I hope you have seen knight takes on e5. And this is the move of Atkins, of course, as a very talented chess player. As a very gifted player. Of course, he didn't miss this. It was a very simple tactic. Uh, deflecting the rook and also threatening knight takes on f7 and after which is accepted rook takes on e5 but you might also consider what happens if queen to f8 then knight takes knight and it is that simple threatening checkmate so if capturing check and it's all over if moving the king we have check so rook takes queen takes and this is game over okay so after knight takes on e5 threatening knight takes on f7, forking the king uh, and the queen. So rook takes on e5. But this is deflecting the rook. So Atkins captured the knight. Knight takes on f6 and threatening checkmate. So black played h6 and black is thinking that, okay, the knight 
uh, the knight and the bishop is under attack, and he's going to get back the material in this position. But also if g takes, of course bishop takes, and this is winning the queen, forking the king and the queen. So after knight takes on f6, we have h6, and it is white to move. Did you see the move? Okay, bishop takes on h6, and this is the strongest move. So threatening to go back with the bishop, so we have g takes on f6, and if queen takes knight, then bishop to g5, this also blocks the rook, and this is winning the queen, this is check, very beautiful stuff. So we have bishop takes on h6, g takes on h f6, and Atkins played bishop to g5, and black actually resigned here. A black played very poor, uh, by the way. So if king to g8, then we have bishop takes on f6, both threatening checkmate and attacking the queen. So if defending the queen, getting checkmated. And if king to g7, then we have check, and uh, moving the king back is the only move. And after bishop takes on f6, both threatening checkmate and attacking the queen. So queen takes is the only move for not getting checkmated, and then queen takes on f6. And after bishop takes on f6, if black tries something like rook to h5, then we have in between move check, and then later we can capture the queen, or we can even give check if king goes left, and then checking the king again with the rook, and then we can capture the queen, maybe after capturing the pawn, that's game over. So, okay, I hope that you have enjoyed watching this chess game, and you should know more about Henry Ernst Atkins, nine times British chess champion, despite treating the, ga treating the game as a hobby, never took the game seriously, never practiced seriously, his true passion, his true occupation uh, was mathematics, he was a math teacher, and he sometimes occasionally played chess and became the British chess champion for nine times. <laughs> Not bad, isn't it? So, nine times. Uh, okay, so stay safe, take care, and bye-bye.